Hello guys, this is Mavic, and for today's episode, I wanted to talk to you about caladiums. Hello everyone, and if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please click the subscribe button for more gardening, cooking, and travel tips videos. Caladiums have been popular houseplants for decades, and lately, caladiums are getting more and more attention. We've been seeing tons of them popping up on Instagram and on Facebook, in stunning colors and patterns from dark red with green edges to pink speckled white leaves. They are so famous that there's even competitions for caladiums. Here is one that was held in Bangkok, Thailand last year. This is the first prize winner which is a hybrid caladium by a famous caladium breeder in Thailand. Here is the second place and the third place. And there is even an annual Caladium Festival. This is held in the Caladium capital of the world, Lake Placid, Florida. Caladiums are plants that are native to South and Central America, and they are known for their colorful leaves that are heart-shaped. They are also called the Heart of Jesus, Angel's Wings, and Elephant Ears. And in the Philippines, we also call them Gabi Gabi plant. So there are two main types of caladiums, fancy-leaved and strap-leaved caladiums. Fancy-leaved caladiums have large heart-shaped or semi-heart-shaped leaves on long petioles. Strap-leaved caladiums have shorter and narrower leaves. They also have ruffled edges on short petioles, and they are more compact. Now, caladiums are toxic to pets, so as much as I want to have more caladiums, I have to keep my collection to a minimum. Chewing on caladium causes extreme irritation or swelling of the mouth, tongue, or throat. But my mom has a ton of caladiums at her home in the Philippines. Here are just some of her collections. Now, caladiums can be purchased as potted plants or dormant tubers. The tubers can be planted directly in the garden during spring or started indoors four to six weeks before the average frost date. Because caladiums have thin leaves, they are very light sensitive, so plant them only in shade or in location with partial filtered sunlight. Also, plant them in spots where they will not be affected by wind. Too much wind can damage their leaves. Caladiums don't have stems. I'm not sure if you know that, but yes, they do not have stems. They have petioles, and petioles are softer than stems. And these plants thrive in moist, well-drained soil. They need to be watered on a regular basis, especially during dry conditions. In fact, watering them on a weekly basis is highly recommended. If you are in the States or in colder climate, it is possible to store caladiums over the winter. You can dig up the caladium tubers and store them in a dry vermiculite or peat moss, put them in a breathable bag, and keep them in your garage or in any cool or dry areas. And make sure that you label your caladiums before storing them, separating the white from the red and the pink to make it easier for planting next year. And although they are grown for their beautiful bicolor leaves, caladiums may also bloom. They can produce a single arum type flower with a green or pinkish thick spike, you know, similar to spikes of kaya lily. There is a ton of caladium varieties. So here are some of the varieties and hybrids that I like the most, and some gorgeous caladiums that I saw on social media. So this is the bombshell. It has intense red with deep, almost blue-green edges. This can actually stand full sun because its leaves are thicker compared to other caladium leaves. And this is moonlight. It has luminous, almost entirely white leaf that makes it stand out. This grows well in shady areas. And this is Summer Breeze. It has large mint green leaves with red veins and bright white highlights. This grows well in shady area too, and they are perfect accent plant in a shade container or as a border for your flower bed. And this is Allure. This is a newly patented hybrid variety. It is off-white with striking deep green veins. I hope you guys can see it. It could do well with some morning sun but also prefers shade. And this is Raspberry Moon. This features blotches of dark green and raspberry pink to red, which can cover most of the leaf. It performs best in part shade to shade. 
And this is Pink Splash. It has an almost translucent leaves with pink center and green border. And this is Burning Heart. It has bronze leaf with pink to orange spots. This is a completely new color for caladiums. This sold out in my local garden in just two days. Alright, and here are some of the caladiums on social media that really got my attention. I don't have any of these yet, but I thought of just sharing these photos with you. This is Florida Clown. It has a combination of green, pink, red, and white splashes on the leaves. And this is Freckles. It has green leaves with varying shades of pink speckles. This is Thai Beauty Caladium with beautiful pink leaves, really great for beginners. And this is Cranberry Star. It is mostly white with red splotches. This is Marimois. It is another white with green veins and pink or red spots. And this is New Wave. It has really cool retro colors with bright yellow and vivid pink colors. This is Seven of Luck. It has deep burgundy red leaves. This is Red Beret, an absolute head turner. I really like this one. White Wonders, a white strap leaved caladium with distinctive green borders. This is Splash of Wine Caladium, which is another strap leaved caladium that grows well in sunny location. And lastly, this is Hilo Beauty. It has green heart shaped leaves with white spots. I really love its camouflage pattern. Alright, so that's it for now. You can really tell that more varieties have become available to us. Some new cultivars have been bred to grow in direct sunlight, have thicker leaves, and are more disease resistant. So what's been your favorite caladium breed so far? And do you grow caladiums too? If so, how do you take care of them? Let me know. Put them in the comment box below. Alright, thank you so much for watching and see you on my next video.